All right, all right, all right. What's going on, everybody? Uh, grand rising, grand rising, rich rising, whatever you want to say. Um, happy to have you here today for another reading of Rich and Righteous, The Spiritual Secrets of Mastering Money Manifestation in Your Mind. Um, we've been together for almost seven weeks now going through this process of reading this book about three to six pages a day. Um, it's been an absolute blessing. Uh, we've had over 500 people live here together on a daily basis, which is absolutely powerful. Um, this is the best way that we can start our day by pouring into ourselves first before we go out into the world and start pouring into others from our abundance. So uh, thank you to everybody who's been here for this journey. Um, if you uh, let me know how many days or how many uh, weeks you've been here on this journey. We've been here for uh, what is this one? This one is I think this is our 35th. Let me see real quick. I think this is our 35th session together. Let me check real quick. We've been pushing, pushing, pushing. Um, this is, yeah, this is our 35th. This is our 35th day together, y'all. <laughs> so um, it's been about seven weeks. Absolutely amazing. And uh, for those of you who don't know, um, I got a nudge from God uh, about seven weeks ago um, and said, Julian, read your book out loud to the people. And so here I am doing what I, I'm supposed to do out of obedience. I wrote this book at the beginning of COVID. I knew the world was going to slip into poverty consciousness. <clears throat> and um, and I had already uh, commanded that and overcome that because I quit my job January 9th, 2009, at the bottom of the last recession. And despite what the collective consciousness was experiencing, I didn't have that experience. I experienced abundance because of the money mindset that is in this book. And so um, for me, it's not just important for me to sell books. That's not uh, what's most important. Um, that's getting the book in your hands. What's more important than anything is getting the book in your head, right? Um, a lot of people will have books on their bookshelf that they intend to read, but have never read them. So uh, for me, as the author of this book, knowing how powerful, um, I'm actually not the author. I um I got the assist, right? Um, God used me to uh, give and gave this divine download to me and through me. And so I don't consider myself the author. I don't consider any of the money that I have as mine. I don't possess the money. My name's not on the money. I'm just a steward, right? And um, we want to get into space of being where we are able to be used by God, knowing that God is also the source of everything in our lives, the source of our wealth, the source of our love, the source of our faith. Um, and we want to go there. Not um, not to disregard people, right? Not to disregard the other children of God that are around us, but uh, just knowing where your true source is and that it comes from within. It's not God up in the sky. It is God within you. And so today uh, we are still in the uh, money commandment number four, which is how the rich and righteous speak about money. And we are on page 172. And we're going to be talking about the power of I am. We're going to be talking about the power of I am. This is a very short chapter um, but it is one of the most powerful. We are literally going to be talking about two of the most powerful words in the English language when combined. All right. And so uh, for those of you who are just joining us for the first time, um, you can uh, get a copy of the book at moneyandmanifestation.com. Um, moneyandmanifestation.com. You can go there. The book is $100. Yes, it is $100. You see this $100 bill right here that I'm using as a bookmark? This book is $100. But when you buy the book, you get five copies. One is for you. Four is for you to give to others to stimulate your personal economy. Okay, um, we don't relate or we don't rely on government stimulus. We actually stimulate our personal economy from, from within. We know as you give, so you shall receive. The reason many of you aren't receiving at the level that you desire is because you're not giving. The reason I'm receiving at the level that I desire is because I give a lot every single day. You, you even see me here demonstrating how I give. And if you don't think that this returns back to me financially and in other ways. Um, then you don't understand the universal laws yet. And that's what I'm trying to not only teach you, but also be a living demonstration of. You think that I could literally show up here for three months at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, pour into people for 45 to a, a minutes to an hour every single day and not get any return from that? No, that is not how the universe works, right? As you give, so you shall receive. And so um, I receive from this space not only... Um, not only financially, but uh, after we turn off the lives, um, after we, we end the streams, I read your comments and and I literally have hundreds of people praying for me every single day. Praying for me, people who I've never met before. You know how rich and how valuable that is, is for people to be interceding on your behalf, praying that God um, stays uh, stays with me in every step of my life. Those prayers, those affirmations that people send to me in the chat and in the comments could be more valuable than any 
money that I get from a book sale. If you understand the power of prayer, if you understand the power of thought, if you understand the power of word. So I um, didn't intend when I when I did this, I did this out of obedience. I didn't intend for any return. That's not what children of God do. We don't give to get. We don't give to get. But there's a there's a caveat. We as children of God must learn how to receive so that we can give more. See, many of us are great givers, right? By default, we are givers. And many of us have got burned in that way because by default, we are givers and we have not developed the equivalent muscle of how to receive. And so I recognize through this process that if I want to give more, guess what I have to learn, family? I have to learn how to receive more. If I want to be a greater giver, I have to learn how to become a greater receiver. Because if I continue to give, 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 and nothing is pouring into me and I'm not receiving, then guess what? My cup ends up empty and now I can no longer give. Now I'm burned out. Now I'm resentful. Now I'm frustrated. And now I've lost, not only am I not giving, the people that I was meant to give to, now they end up empty because they haven't learned how to receive themselves or give themselves to stimulate their own personal economy. And again, that economy is not just money. So I've been blessed. I want you all to know it is a blessing to be a blessing. And I've been blessed by this space as much as all of you have told me that you've been blessed by this space. I'm equally blessed. This is not a burden for me. This is not a burden for me to show up here. And I will be here every single day at 830 a.m. Eastern Standard Time for Read Rich and Righteous. Uh, as long as I don't have a flight, no emergency comes up. I look forward to this every single day. This is the best way that I can feel I can start my day um, in addition to meditation. So I wake up, I start my meditation first, okay? I do my other things, but in terms of service, this is the best way I can start my day. And so I'm so grateful and it's so simple. And I've said it before, when is the last time you had an author read you a book? Besides a children's story, when you were at the library, when you were five years old, when is the last time an author was actually reading you the book? They didn't just care about selling the book to you. They cared about getting the information in the book into your head so that it just didn't end up on a shelf. Like I said, 40 million copies of Rich Dad Poor Dad have been sold, but 40 million people haven't read it. OK, they haven't read it and 40 million people have not bought real estate. So it's more important to me that this is in your head than it is in your hand. If you would like to get it in your hand, that's fine. That's beautiful. Right. Um, but it's more important to me that I get this in people's heads because I know that's what's going to help uh, the righteous become rich. All right. So today. We are on um, page 172. We are in uh, Money Commandment number four, how the rich and righteous speak about money. And this is a short chapter. Um, we could be in and out. Depends on how the spirit moves in me <laughs> today. OK, and um, so uh, if you have the book, please join us on 172. All right. Um, please like and share this video. Please like and share this video. Um, we have to break these algorithms. And the only way to break algorithms is through the actions of the people, the people saying that I love this content. I want more of it. And I believe that other people should have more of it. Um, that is what liking and sharing does. It's not a futile act. All right. So we have over 200 people on YouTube. We only have 76 likes at this moment in time. It costs you nothing to like heart and share this video. And so for those of you on YouTube, uh, please click the heart button. If it's your first time, I'm with you. But if you've gotten value from any time that you've been here before, please click the um, like button so that we can get the algorithm to kick in. And uh, same for you on Instagram. All right. So here we go. We are on page 172. And the chapter is called The Power of I Am. The Power of I Am. All right. Mm. Then Moses asked God, suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they asked me, what is his name? What should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also told Moses, say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. And this is how I am to be remembered in every generation. Exodus 3, 13 through 15. All right. Exodus 3, 13 through 15. So um, first and foremost, uh, I've done a video already on who are the true Israelites. 
Um, and the true Israelites and the true Jews are not who you believe them to be or who they've made themselves to be. They are not. And so I encourage you to go to YouTube and watch that video when you get a chance. Um, uh, <laughs> that will uh, make it clear who the uh, children of God are. And it is not an exclusive group of people who is walking around this earth seeking to control everything on this earth. Um, it is not who you think it is. And so I encourage you to go watch that video when you get a chance. Um, I will be using the Bible to really decode and break down who the real Israelites are. And I think you'll be very surprised at the answer uh, to that question. All right. So um, here we're talking about the Israelites. And um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I just encourage you to watch that video again. It's on YouTube. You can Google it. Um, and it is under my playlist called Metaphysical Bible Study. It is the top video on my playlist, Metaphysical Bible Study. In fact, let me actually put that in there so that you can save it because uh I need you to watch that because I need you to know who you are. Remember, we are talking about financial spirituality, not financial literacy, right? And financial spirituality, um, and financial spirituality, um, let me see, let me go get this video link just so that you can have it. Um, all right. Boom. All right, I'm gonna paste this link in just so you have it. Um, so copy that link. Copy that link and um, just save it. Save it for later so you can watch it. And uh, that will let you know who the true um, Israelites or Jews are. All right. Cool. So if you don't think that the, uh, if you don't think that this book. If you don't think that this book is about you. Uh, you're mistaken. I'll put it to you that way. If you don't think you think this book is about some other group of people. Uh, that video, the way I break it down, you'll realize that you're mistaken if you don't think that this book is about you. It's about some other people and you are a Gentile. Not true. Okay. So with that, page 172, we talked about I am in the context of your identity, but now I want to explore the power of I am as your word. When combined, I am are the two most powerful words in the English language, because that is what God calls itself. Exodus 27 reads, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God, for the Lord will not hold anyone guiltless who misuses his name. Reverend Ike, how many of you know about Reverend Ike? How many know about Reverend Ike? <laughs> Type Rev Ike if you know about Reverend Ike. Type Rev Ike if you know about Reverend Ike. And if you don't know about Reverend Ike, you better ask somebody. You better ask somebody, okay? Reverend Ike said, I am is God. Listen to this. I am is God. Whatever you add after I am, you become. Whatever you add to I am, shall be added unto you. That is, that's why we are told in the commandments, thou shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Every time you add something negative to I am, you take the name of the Lord in vain. I'm gonna repeat it again. I am is God, right? Exodus 3, 13 through 15 established that. Whatever you add after I am, when you were speaking, you become. Whatever you add to I am shall be added unto you. That's why we are told in the commandments, thou shall not take the name of the Lord in vain. Every time you add something negative to I am, you take the name of the Lord in vain. You thought taking the name of the Lord in vain meant um, not saying Jesus or not oh, in, a, in, a, in a bad sense or, or cursing God in a bad sense. No. Anytime you say, I am lazy, I am tired, I am broke, I am, uh, I am confused, I am sad, I am, I am uh, angry, I am blah, 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 blah. I don't even want to add any more. Okay. I know I can deny all those things. I know the power of my mind and my mind knows that I'm just saying that for teaching purposes. I'm not affirming any of those things. Anytime you add something negative after I am, you are taking the Lord's name in vain. This redefines what you 
thought it meant to take the Lord's name in vain. Okay? And it's typically when you put an emotion or an identity. I am a liar. I am a uh, cheater. I am a um, murderer. I am a... Um, I am a uh, procrastinator. I am, um, I am, uh, what's another identity? Uh, I am single. Like some of you can continue to uh, affirm that. And I tell single moms all the time, what you talking about? Stop affirming that I'm a single mom, right? Because then what does that do? That only projects back to the universe that that is who I want to be. Now, if you want to be a single mom, then go ahead and use that language. But if you are a woman who has child and the father is not present, stop affirming that you're a single mom. You are a mom who happens to be single because you realize, yes, I am a sinner. That is the worst one. Thank you, N-Y-E. Uh, thank you. I am a sinner is the worst one that religion taught you to accept. They told you straight out the gates the moment you came out of your mother's womb, you were a sinner. I am a sinner. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I'm a wretch. That's what they teach you in these places. They teach you as a child of God, you are a wretch. And here's how you know I'm a sinner is not true. Go get the youngest child in your family, okay? Hold them, little seven-month-year-old, hold them and look them in the eye and say, you are a sinner. Try calling them a sinner 100 times. You are a sinner. You are a sinner. You, are a sinner. you, are a, you will not get to number 10 without you having to put them down because you know it's not true. It's trickery. They told you that you were the opposite of what you are so that you would have to go through them to get back to who you are. The only identity that is ever true of you and it's permanent, is that you are a child of God. I don't care if you're a procrastinator. I don't care if you're a murderer. I don't care if you lied. I don't care if you're a cheater. I don't care if you've done any of those things. Those are not your identity. The only identity that holds true, no matter what, is that you are a child of God. Because all of those are behaviors that can be changed. But your identity, your true identity as a child of God can never be changed. We already know this from the story of the prodigal son. The father was waiting with open arms for the son, the prodigal son, to come back. The father did not look at what the son had done, the, how the son had squandered the money, did not look at the behaviors. He knew that the root of it was that the child had lost its sense of identity. Therefore, the behaviors came out of that false sense of identity. If these churches and religions told you that you were a child of God and not a sinner, then perhaps we'd have less murder. Perhaps we'd have less theft. Perhaps we'd have less violence because your identity your being shapes your doing and then your doing shapes your having. But if I've been in a church my entire life and they keep affirming every Sunday that I'm a sinner, then guess what? If my being is a sinner, then my doing is going to be a sinner and then I'm going to have the results of a sinner. Even Jesus says in John 10, 34, is it not written in your law? I have said ye are gods. Not God in a capital G sense, but God in a lowercase g, that I am an offspring of God, that that is my mother, father that I come from. So I am is critical. And if you hear yourself, you probably say I am more frequently than you know throughout the day. Somebody greets you today when you go to work. I'm tired. I'm so busy. Right? So how many of you caught yourself saying those things? I'm tired. I'm busy. Oh, I'm so frustrated. Oh, I'm so angry. Watch your words. This is why this week I told y'all to shut up out of love. I told y'all to shut up out of love because your own word shall not return to you void. And some of you are cursing your own lives with your own words. And you can't even see how it's returning back to you because you don't fully understand or believe in the law of cause and effect. You believe the law of cause and effect in the physical realm. If I take this bottle and I hit it, you know that it's going to fall over and the water is going to spill. You believe it in the physical realm, but you can't see it in the unseen realm, in the ethereal realm, in the spiritual realm. But it is happening. And it is not only is it happening in the spiritual realm, it is materializing in the physical realm for you. Because we know that heaven is your mental experience of life. And then earth is your material experience of life. 
and then you're wondering why these things are showing up in your material experience of life, guess what we have to evaluate? As above, so below, we need to go evaluate what's happening up here in heaven. What's happening in your mind that could have created that situation or that experience, all right? So I'm going to repeat this again because we've had uh, uh, quite a few more people uh, join us since I read it. 172. We're reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets and Mastery, Money Manifestation in Your Mind. Reverend Ike said, I am is God, okay? Exodus 3, 13 through 15 confirms that. God said, uh, tell Moses to tell, what should I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. That's what Moses is supposed to say to the people, to the Israelites, who God is. I am that I am, right? You notice that God does not put anything after I am. It, God is circular. I am that I am. See, the moment you put on an identity onto yourself, I am a Democrat. I am black. I am a woman. I am uh, I am heterosexual. I am uh, middle class. The moment you put an identity after that is other than I am, guess what, family? You actually limit yourself. You've actually, with each identity and label that you use to describe yourself in your Instagram bios and your written bios on your website, each identity that you use, you actually limit yourself and you actually are creating a smaller and smaller box for yourself with every label and identity that you speak. Now, you've introduced yourself. You meet somebody brand new. It could have been infinite possibilities, okay? But now you put yourself in a box and you said, I am a lawyer. Now, that person's perception of what a lawyer is, is now projected upon you. And now you are in a box. You put yourself in a box using your own tongue. When I am in interviews, I say, above all else, I am a child of God, first and foremost. That is my identity. Now, from that, I also happen to be a real estate investor, a real estate educator, a real estate developer, uh, published author, speaker, etc. But I start with my highest identity first, because guess what? All of those other identities that are a big part of who I am, they can all be changed like that. They can all be changed like that. They may seem permanent, but 10 years from now, God may have a different call for my life. And guess what? I will happily sacrifice those lower identities for whatever God has called me to do in that moment. So the most powerful thing, in addition to I am a child of God, is I didn't put the book down, y'all. <laughs> The most powerful thing in addition to I am a child of God is I am that I am. I am that I am. Now, if you say that to somebody in public, they're going to be confused. They're going to be like, what? You, what? what are you, I asked you a question. You saying I am that I am. <laughs> they're going to be so confused, right? But what you're saying is that there are no limits on who I can be. In this moment, I am a father. I'm a husband. I'm this. I'm that. In this moment, I am that. Okay. But when you meet me next week, I may be somebody different. And it's not me being bipolar. It's not me being schizophrenic. It's me being here and now in the moment. Because we know that the kingdom is in the midst. The kingdom is here and now. Luke 17, 21, the kingdom is here and now. It is in this moment. So you may have, you may have met me in a specific space and identity, but that is not all of who I am. And I never want you to get confused that that is all of who I am and that, that that is a permanent state. This is who I am right now. But I can tap into unlimited possibilities. That's how powerful I am. So I want you to be very careful when you say I am because you are literally shaping not only your own identity in your mind, but you are now shaping that identity for the people that you're saying it to. And you're actually limiting yourself because God is unlimited. So as children of God, guess what that means? We're also unlimited unless we start to use these limiting labels to define who we are. Right? I'm picking the book back up now, y'all. <laughs> That's a good one. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a chameleon. Not that I'm hiding, right? But that I can be anything. I have the power to be anything. All right? We're on the top of page 173. Vain means no good. So we're talking about using Lord's name in vain. Vain means to no good purpose or emptiness of speech. Examples include, I am sad, I'm tired, I'm ugly, I'm broke, I'm sick. 
Many of you this winter season said, oh, how you doing? Oh, I'm sick. When you said I'm sick, do you realize you were using the Lord's name in vain? Here's why. Because you were made perfect, whole, and complete. Sick is just a temporary state of being. Okay? It's a temporary state of being. It is what is happening in this moment, but that is not who you are. I feel sick may be more accurate, but you are not sick. I feel sick. I am coughing. That may be true, but you are not sick. And you may think that this is just semantics, but if you see how it plays out in your life, if you were able to have a God's eye view of your life and see how your word is actually playing, playing out, how it is never returning to you void, you would be more mindful of your words. I am not enough. I am stupid. I am angry. None of these statements help you return to your true self. In the moment, it may be accurate to say, I feel tired rather than I am tired. I'm just encouraging you to be mindful of how you speak about yourself to yourself. I don't care about how other people think about you or what they say about you. What matters is what you say about yourself to yourself. It is you and your highest self having a conversation all the time. And that dialogue is actually what's shaping your life. Nobody talking about you has more power over you than how you talk about yourself. I don't care who's hating on you, family. I don't care who's gossiping about you. Unless you believe what they say, then what they say has no power over you, or at least it has it is not as powerful as your own word over your own life. You have elders in the church or whatnot speak a word over your life and it just doesn't resonate. Guess what? Brush it off. You go get a reading and 90% of it resonates and 10% didn't. Guess what? Just brush it off. Because nobody's word has more power over you than your own word. In Luke 22, 70, Pontius Pilate had Jesus on public trial and it reads, so they all asked, are you the son of God? And you know what? You want to know what Jesus replied? He replied, you say that I am. Notice that even though Jesus used the I am for himself throughout the Gospels, when someone else tried to put words in his mouth and define him, he spewed them out by saying, you say that I am. He said that you say that I am. That's what you say. I just want to let you know those are not my words. That's what you say that I am. And I want to just make that clear. I'm not accepting your identity of me, your perception of me, I am not receiving that. Only I define my identity. Your third grade teacher told you were stupid, that you wouldn't amount to anything. That is what you say that I am. I don't care what you think. All that matters is how I think about myself. Your ex said that you were going to be alone forever. That's what you say that I am. And guess what? That has no implication on my life. Your boss said you'll never make it in this industry or this company. That's what you say that I am. I spew that out. Okay? What you think about me and what you say about me has no indication of who I'm going to become. Okay? Our word. And self-image is the only thing that matters when someone else is seeking to build Our word and self-image is the only thing that matters. Whether someone else is seeking to build us up. Oh, my goodness. Please say that Instagram is still going. Instagram, can you hear me? My alarm just went off. Instagram, can you hear me? IG, let me know that you can hear me. I don't know why my alarm would affect IG. Instagram, can you hear me? I did use do not disturb today, y'all. Dang, they can't hear y'all. All right, so I got to start it over. Oh, my goodness. How did my alarm, my phone alarm stop that? All right, I'm going to uh, go to YouTube. Sorry, y'all. It's been an everyday thing, y'all. I even use do not to serve. Go to YouTube. 
All right. Thank you, YouTube. <laughs> I wish ever, I could get everybody on YouTube, but um, some people just, uh, they're Instagrammers, so it's all good. All right. Good. All right. Sorry, YouTube. My phone went off, and that somehow cut off the audio on Instagram. It wasn't even a call this time. And uh, infestation. Dang, I was on a roll too. <laughs> I'm going to get back on it. One second, y'all. Just trying to get them set up. They're coming back. All right, cool. We good? Sorry about that, IG. Uh, all right, cool. Yes, please come over to YouTube. Come over to YouTube. I think YouTube is uh, has been better to us. YouTube only crashed one time. YouTube only crashed one time. All right, cool. Y'all with me? We back. We back. We back. All right, so where I left off on page 173. Our word and self-image is the only thing that matters, whether someone else is seeking to build us up or break us down with their words. It doesn't matter what other people think or say about you. All that matters is what you think and say you are, who you think and say you are. So I want to I wanna catch this, y'all. Listen, even when someone else builds you up with their word, you don't want to give them too much power. Because if someone builds you up with their word, guess what they can do? also do? Guess what they can also do? That person has now put you on a pedestal and can tear you down. So it's not just about somebody speaking negatively about you. It is also about not letting your head get inflated when somebody else is speaking things about you, even in the positive. Because at the end of the day, the only word that matters is your word. The only word that matters is your word. Oh, you're so talented. You are amazing. You're incredible. Okay. You can say, oh man, that's nice. But the question, the question, listen to me. The question becomes, do I feel I'm incredible? Do I feel I'm talented? Do I think I am amazing? So this is not just about brushing off negative words, but even positive. Because at the end of the day, you may take that positive and say, that if that positive brings you to the realization that I actually am incredible, I actually am talented, I actually am amazing. If that positive word brings you to that state of awareness, then that's great. But the ultimate state of awareness has to re reside in you, not in somebody else's word. The ultimate state of awareness has to reside and come from you, not somebody else's word. Because we've seen it in Hollywood, a lot of people Fans may project, you're so talented, you're amazing. But deep down inside that celebrity, they don't feel that way. They don't actually believe it. Despite thousands and thousands of people believing that for them, the only word that matters is your own word about yourself. So again, if we can hear somebody say something positive about us, and then ultimately we can internalize it. So we don't give somebody power because they affirmed us. Because now they will use, they can use the positivity, right? To actually start to influence us. And they actually can be telling you that because they know that you actually have self-doubt. The true source has to come from you. You have to come the awareness of I am incredible, I am amazing, I am talented, I am gifted has to come from you. We never want to rely on an outside source. Okay, so outside sources. There are rare occasions when we need an outside source. Okay, a car sometimes needs a jump, right, from an, another car. A heart sometimes needs a defibrillator to get started. Those are two scenarios with a heart and a car where you need something outside of yourself to get restarted. So when somebody affirms you in the positive, you can use that temporarily to activate your own self, to get your engine started again, to get your heart beating again. But we never want to rely on the defibrillator or the car jump. 
You understand that? It's a subtle difference. We can use it to get jump started and be reminded of who we are, but we never want to depend on or rely on it, even if it's a positive word. Is that clear? It's a very subtle distinction, but I, I wanna make that clear, <laughs> okay? All that matters is what you say about yourself. And guess what? Even when your word about yourself is not high, the next question to always ask is, how does God see me? One of my favorite Kendrick Lamar songs said, I hope you see the God in me. I hope you can see it, right? I hope you see the God in me. The question is, do we see the God in ourselves? How does God see me? Yeah, I just made a mistake. But how does God see me in this moment? All right. So again, we're talking about the power of I am. And we're on the bottom of page 173. All right. The next pair, last paragraph on page 173. You remain as God created you, no matter what additional identifiers you add onto yourself with I am. You are not a sinner. You are not broke. You are not poor. You are not sick. You are not inadequate. You are not a doctor. You are not a teacher. You are not a Christian. You are not a Muslim. You are not black. You are not white. You are not a Democrat. You are not a Republican. You are not a man. You are not a woman. God does not see you as any of these things. God does not see you as any of these earthly labels. It only knows you as its child. And it doesn't care what you choose in terms of your limiting labels. All of the above are temporary titles or fleeting feelings that won't last beyond this earthly experience. We are spiritual beings having a human experience. God is spirit. So God only sees us as spirit, as its offspring, as its children. All these other earthly labels, they are temporary and they do not define who you are. God doesn't care about your political party. God does not care about your gender. God does not care about your class. God does not care about your education level. God does not care about your religion. God only sees you as its offspring, as spirit, period. Who you truly are is permanent and never changes. Knowing who you are, uh, not only uh, knowing who you are not helps you understand who you are. When you don't know who you are, anyone can call you anything and you react. A lot of people get caught up trying to prove others wrong. Listen to this. This is how some of us react. They called you stupid. And what did you go do? You went and took that, trying to prove other people wrong. You went and got four college degrees. Now who's the fool? Because now you in how much debt? Because somebody called you stupid, whether it was your parents, whether it was a teacher, whether it was your friends, you took that in, right? You internalized that. And to prove them wrong, now you went and got all this education. Now you got, you got more degrees than juvenile. You got more college degrees than juvenile, all because somebody called you stupid. Somebody outside of yourself. You didn't believe you were stupid up until that moment that you actually ate what they said and ingested it and took it in and embraced it. Now you got more degrees than juvenile. Juvenile got 400 degrees. Some of y'all got 410 degrees all because somebody called you stupid and you made it your mission to prove them wrong. So now you're the one in student debt trying to prove other people wrong who they're not even thinking about you, family. They're not even thinking about you. It was you accepting the identity. Oh, I might be stupid. So now I need to prove to all these people that I'm not stupid. And now they ain't even worried about you. They called you ugly. And now you buying all these beauty products. Somebody called you ugly when you were in elementary school, junior high school. And now you've been fixated 
on manipulating your body and doing all these things to prove to that fifth grader that you're not ugly. You don't even know the name of the fifth grader anymore. Actually, some of y'all remember the name. Some of y'all remember the name of the fifth grader who called you ugly. And now your whole life, what fifth grade, you were how old? Fifth grade, you're like 10. Your whole life, decades later, you are still trying to prove that you're not ugly with all these external things. So now you built the whole beauty industry trying to prove that you're not ugly. They call you broke. So now you go buy things that make you look rich, though those things actually make you even more broke. So somebody called you, somebody called you stupid. You went and got all this education. Now you're in student debt. Now you look stupid. Somebody called you ugly. Now you buy all these beauty products. You manipulate your body in all kinds of way. Now you even look uglier. Somebody called you poor. So now you buy all these things to look rich. And all those things that you bought now actually make you more poor. You, this is why we don't care what other people think. You do not want to spend your entire life trying to prove other people wrong. Because in fact, you will prove their point because it will circle back. They call you lazy and now you work for them twice as hard. You making them rich. They call you a sinner and what do you do? You go get saved. No one's word has power over you unless you accept it or react to it. No one's word has power over you unless you accept it or react to it. Y'all with me? Last paragraph on page 174. This is the power of I am, family. It's not the power of you said. It's not the power of he said. It's not the power of she said. It's the power of I am. I don't care what he said. I don't care what she said. What they said has no power over me. No one's word has power over you unless you accept it or react to it. Last paragraph, page 174. You only have to prove yourself right to yourself by having integrity with your own word. Everything you say is already coming to pass, whether you are aware of it or not. But integrity and deliberate creation is when whatever you deliberately say comes to pass. You can, you can state how you temporarily feel without living in a state of negative feeling. For example, you can state that you feel angry without dwelling in anger. Whatever house, listen to me, house in the Bible represents what? House in the Bible represents what, family? House in the Bible represents a mental state. Tent in the Bible represents a temporary mental state. Okay? So listen to this. This is why a house divided against itself cannot stand. That's not talking about a physical house. It's talking about a mind that is divided cannot stand. When you have incongruent thoughts, I, I want to be rich, but I hate rich people. That is a house divided against itself. My father's house has many rooms. That means that my father's house, my father's mansion represents all of consciousness. My father's house encompasses everything. That's why my father's house has many rooms. It's not a mansion up in the sky where heaven is. These are allegories. These are parables. These are metaphors. My father's house is, it represents all of consciousness. It has many rooms. Any room you can think of, my father's house has. It is, represents all possibilities. This is why th all things are possible. So house represents mind, right? Whatever house you frequent, listen, whatever house or mental state that you frequent becomes your primary residence or dwelling. Whatever house or mental state you frequent becomes your primary residence or dwelling. In the same way, whatever you feel, whatever feeling you dwell on frequently becomes your frequency. Whatever feeling you dwell as in live in frequently ultimately becomes your frequency. It represents the vibration 
that you are sending out. But knowing the truth of who you are shall set you free. This is the power of I am affirmations because they affirm the truth of who you are, even if you are temporarily experiencing the opposite. So I can affirm that I am rich, even if my external environment is showing me poverty. And in fact, the only way for me to get out of poverty is to recognize that I am rich from within. The only way to get out of poverty is to recognize how rich I am within. And we love these rags to riches stories. Those rags to riches stories are somebody who saw poverty and said, this is not who I am. Just because I see poverty as my current circumstance does not mean that I am poor. And so in order to get out of this state and to change this external state around me, this circumstance, I have to not only recognize that I am rich, right? I have to accept that identity, then my being chased my doing and my doing chased my having. This is how you get a rags to riches story. This is the power of I am affirmation because they affirm the truth of who you are, even if you are temporarily experiencing the opposite. You will learn how to affirm yourself using I am affirmations and money commandment number five. So in the next section, we will get into the power of I am affirmations. But that is it for today. And today we have reached, even despite technology difficulties, we reached 585 people. We got 399 on YouTube and 180 on 184 on Instagram, even with the technical hiccup. We continue to expand. That means that this vibration that we're sending out individually and collectively is powerful and is tra it's attracting more and more people to this conversation, to this dialogue that we're having because it is good. And we are and God is at our back because we know that this is righteous work, that this is good work. And there's no powerful force, no more powerful force behind you than love and righteousness. This is coming from a place of love. It is coming from a place of righteousness. And when those things are at your back, you will witness whatever it is that you're doing expand, period. It can't help but to expand. And so I thank everybody for being here. I thank everybody for sharing. I thank everybody for um, doing this work because you, I don't know what you were doing with your mornings before this. I don't know what you were doing with your mornings before this. But somehow you allowed me to come into your life for 45 minutes to an hour every single morning. And I'm grateful for that. Can you tell me what were you doing with your morning before this? What were you doing from 830 to 930 before this? Because somehow, some way that space was getting filled up. What was it getting filled up with? <laughs> what was it getting filled up with? I, I just I'm curious. Were you just doing more work? Were you starting your working for your boss? You were sleeping. Okay, some of you were sleeping. Some of you started work early. Some of you are listening to podcasts, yoga. Okay, I still don't want you to give up your yoga practice. Some people are rushing to work, to get to work early, right? Why are we rushing to work? The work is going to be there, family. <laughs> you ain't got to rush to work, <laughs> all right? <laughs> Cleaning. Okay, I was just curious. Watching ESPN. <laughs> I see you. All right, cool. So listen, family, we're going to be here um, tomorrow, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Um, we are here every weekday, um, and we are going to be reading the section on yay or nay. Yay or nay, nay means yes or no, family. And we're going to talk about the power of yes or no, a clear yes or no. God don't like lukewarm, okay? So we're going to talk about that tomorrow. We'll be on one pa page 175. If you're just joining us, this is your first time here. Uh, we are reading Rich and Righteous, Spiritual Secrets and Mastering Money, Manifestation in Your Mind. This is a book that I wrote, and um, we are here at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day, uh, reading about four to eight pages. Um, if you'd like a copy of the book, you can go to getfreenow.com, getfreenow.com. That'll take you to uh, my website where you see everything that I have going on. So you'll see the book there. The book is $100. You get five copies, though. Okay. If you go to Amazon right now, you can buy the book for one book for one hundred dollars. Okay. If you go to getfreenow.com, you will get uh, five copies of the book plus the rituals workbook. Okay. Plus the audio book. So again, the reason we do that is one copy is for you four for you to give away to stimulate your personal economy by putting you in a state of giving. Um, if you aren't convinced yet that this book is worth a hundred, is, is this book, <laughs> are the teachings in this book worth over a hundred dollars y'all? <laughs> 
Are the teachings in this book worth over $100? Have they already made you over $100? Will they make you over $100 over the course of your lifetime? Yes or no? <laughs> it's a no-brainer, right? So that's there. Um, and so uh, thank you. Um, yes, in, in the comments, you will also see that people who have bought the book, if you bought the book, type RR. If you bought the book, type RR. If you bought the book, type RR. So in the comments, you'll see people typing RR. That means that they bought the book and that means that they have extra copies to give away if they haven't already given them away. If you are in a state of lack, meaning that you like, Julian, I ain't got $100 right now. I don't have it right now, but I know I'm rich. Please reach out to somebody in the comments and say, hey, if you have an extra copy, I would love to have one and I'd be happy to pay for shipping. Okay. We want you to ask from a place of need, not from a place of neediness, not from a place of victim consciousness. Okay. So if you need a book, message somebody that typed RR and say, hey, if you have an extra copy of the book, I'd be happy to cash up you shipping and even a little bit more. And uh, I would love a copy of your book. They may even graciously say, no, I got it. And I'll just send it to you. Give me your address. We are creating an economy right now and we are sending this vibration out to each other. And um, they want to give. Children of God want to give. And so just because you don't have $100 in your account, it says, ask and you shall receive. And so I'm encouraging you. We are encouraging you to ask because there are people who are on the other side who are ready to give. This is how we create a communal and collective economy. There's people who are in real need, not from a victim consciousness, not neediness, but in real need, who know that once they get this book, they will actually use it. And then, like I said yesterday, if you have to start in that state, once you've actually got the book, once it's actually manifested for you, abundant, then all we ask is that you pay it forward and that you do the exact same thing for other people. That's all. That's all. Okay. So again, that's at getfreenow.com, getfreenow.com. All right. Um, the other thing, two, th two more things I got going on. Um, I'm trying to get all y'all married. How, where am I? We're type single if you, uh, no, we got to come up with a different word. You know, it's, you singular with God, but yeah, go ahead. Type single if you single. Type single if you single. We're going to come up with different words than single. I don't think that really captures it. But if you single, just let them know. Let them know. Just, just throw up your, just throw up a little hand. Let people know. So ladies, there's some dope men who are actually, there's some dope souls that are here, family. Somebody else who's waking up at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, getting this consciousness, that that right there is a uh, a criteria in and of itself. <laughs> that right there is a criteria in and of itself. Like, okay, we on, we, we on similar wavelengths. Of course, we got to figure out if there's other things. This is not it, but there's some, some beautiful people here, family and fellas. Um, you outnumbered. You outnumbered. So... I'm just saying, you know, we got these things called DMs or whatnot, you know, just, you know, do your thing. Now, if you're trying to figure this thing out, family, <laughs> uh, if you're trying to figure this thing out, um, uh, I'm creating this thing. Uh, my friends and I actually are creating uh, this thing called 100 Dope Women and 100 Dope Men. And we are redesigning the entire dating process to make sure that you uh, date based on vibration, not based on visual alone. Um, that you have a proper vetting process and that you get rid of your old negative patterns. So one, we got to heal from the past. Two, we got to generate self-love. And then three, we got to actually find a partner that is in alignment with us. And um, we have been meeting together to crack this code and we have something that we're going to reveal in February. And if you're interested in that, you can go to 100dopemen or 100dopewomen.com and you can fill out the interest form. OK, no commitment whatsoever. You just fill out the interest form. And uh, that is there um, at 100 dope men or 100 dope women. OK, we got to multiply this wealth and you multiply that wealth when you bring divine feminine and divine masculine together. OK, um, so. Individuals do not run the world. Families do. And so we got to create more families. This is why I lead the multifamily movement. Multifamily is not just real estate. OK, it's multiple families coming together to create regenerational wealth, enter the asset class. As you know, I'm seeking to build the richest, create the richest family in the world, the wealthiest family in the world. 
right? What do I mean by that? 100,000 people with a million dollars net worth would be $100 billion. That would make us the fifth wealthiest family in the world. So that's a 30-year commitment that I have, and um, I just encourage you to stay close. Um, last but not least, um, last but not least, uh, you have um, uh, Generational Wealth Conference. That's MLK Weekend, January 13th, 14th, and 15th in Atlanta, Georgia. Um, and uh, that's where there will be, it'll be about 1,200 of us um, learning these financial wealth principles. Um, I'm bringing all of my friends who speak on entrepreneurship, various forms of entrepreneurship, from online products to T-shirt businesses to software development. Um, uh, I'm bringing folks on real estate, various types of real estate, from building a cleaning business to Airbnb to becoming a real estate agent, investing in multifamily real estate, uh, doing real estate development, um, tiny homes. So we got uh, people in various aspects of real estate coming through, um, tax strategies to avoid paying the government, and then... And then finally, uh, life insurance. So um, that is going to be in um, Atlanta, MLK Weekend. That, that is at genwealthcon.com. Genwealthcon.com. And uh, there are live stream tickets available. So for those of you who are like, um, I can't book a flight right now, Julian, um, or uh, or whatnot, uh, there are live stream of tickets available. So all those links are at getfreenow.com. All those links are at getfreenow.com. So you'll find the book there. Okay. You'll find 100 Dope Men, 100 Dope Women. The interest form will be there. And you'll also find Gen Wealth Con uh, tickets. So uh, go check those out if you want to tap in and plug in with the community in different ways. Um, these are the three ways that I am uh, moving towards creating the wealthiest family in the world. Um, that's Black Wealth through multifamily real estate and Gen Wealth Con. Um, that is Black Love through 100 Dope Women and 100 Dope Men. And then that's Black Spirituality through read rich and righteous and metaphysical bible study so um these are the problems that i've committed to solve and i told you this before your wealth will be directly proportional to the size of the problems that you solve so if you want to wonder why i'm wealthy look at the size of the problems that i'm solving family if you want to understand why why is bill gates wealthy because he solved a huge problem nothing else why is jeff bezos wealthy because he solved a huge supply chain problem to be able to get you whatever you desire within one day, that's a huge supply chain problem. On the surface, Amazon looks like it's a retail company, but Amazon doesn't have that many products, okay? What it is is a logistics company, and he solved a huge problem, okay? So your wealth will be directly proportional to the problems, the size of the problems that you solve. These are the three problems that I've committed my life to, and I need you to get very clear about the problem. I've told you this before. Get very clear about the problem you are passionate about solving. Once you get clear about the problem that you are passionate about solving and you develop a solution or a skill set that actually solves that problem, I guarantee, I guarantee that abundance will flow into your life financially and in other forms. All right. So this is the work that we're doing and we're going to get more into passion finder and, and those things later on as we uh, cover your blessing model and your business model. Um, but for right now, uh, plug in through uh, Gen Wealth Con through 100 Dope Men and 100 Dope Women showing up here 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time every single day and um, getting uh, the Rich and Righteous book. All right. Family, I appreciate you. Set a phone alarm. I will see you tomorrow. Love y'all. Wishing you an abundant day. And, um, you know, we're still in the chapter on uh, uh, how the Rich and Righteous speak about uh, money and wealth. And so my challenge today till Friday is for some of y'all to what? Shut up. <laughs> I've never I, I can't believe that I'm on camera telling 500 people to shut up with a smile on my face you know I'm joking with y'all but I'm serious I'm serious and I'm joking I just want you to be quiet and observe your self-talk that is within and observe how you've been speaking about uh, how you've been speaking how you've been using the power of I am right I just want you to be mindful of your own word because your own word is really where the power is. All right. Love y'all. Everything is at getfreenow.com. Everything is at getfreenow.com. I'll see you tomorrow, 8 30 a.m. Eastern. Much love, y'all. Peace.